logic. Logic is just a study of how people think using deductions. A lot of it's in block notation, and we'll use P, Q, and R, and then a lot of other symbols to represent what we're thinking. First off, simple statements. You'll see that quite a bit. They only contain one idea, and it can be either true or false. For example, Tom Brady plays football. Simple statement. Nothing more to it. Now, compound, compound statements consist of two or more simple statements, or a simple statement that's been negated. Now those you'll see like words like and, or, if, then, and, 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 and if, and only if in those. An example, Tom Brady plays football and Tim Duncan plays basketball. It has two different simple statements in it. See that? Now this little chart is going to be handy for certain questions to like show the, the negation of statements. So you want to take a close, pay close attention to that and remember where you see it, where you've seen it. It's also in your book. If you see this squiggly, that represents the negation of a, of a statement. It's also the same as not. So we're getting to some notation now, some symbolic notation. And this is another symbol. It's upside down V. It represents and for the most part, but it also does, also represents but, however, and nevertheless. But and is the is the main word that you'll see it used for it. And then the v is actually an or statement. This is the upside down. The and is a conjunction, and the or is a disjunction. This arrow represents a conditional. It's an if then statement, and then the double sided arrow is a by conditional, if and only if. So this is these are symbols. You need to become familiar with them. So we're going to start using these symbols to write things in words. So you're given this, this variable P. It represents this simple statement, the sky is blue. So you want to state the negation, and you want to write it in symbols. Well, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to write the negation in symbols. Since that squiggly represents the negation, or the not, squiggly, squiggly P is the negation of it. And then to write it in or to state it in words that would be the sky is not blue. See how that works? That's the negation of it. That squiggly means the same thing. Now, we have two variables in this example. P represents the player makes a basket, and Q represents the player is fouled. So we're, we're going to write in symbolic form. So we have the player does not make the basket. Well, first off, which does this represent? Which variable represents this information? P does. So you have to use a P, but then we have a negation. P does not. So how we show negation? Squiggly. Now this one has two statements in it. The player makes a basket and is not fouled. We have the word and in there also. So we have all kinds of, of symbolic notation going on here. First off, the player makes the basket is from the P, is not fouled. Well, the foul comes from Q. Since it's not, it's a squiggly Q because there's no not in there. And then we have the word and. Which one is and? Let's go back up here. You see the and is the upside down V. That's the statement. So you use the wording to decide which variable to use. If you need negation, use the squiggly. If it has and, you use that. And if it's or, remember, it's that. Now here's kind of a way to remember it. Or goes with intersections and inner or with with unions I mean and unions look like a U which kind of looks like a V I guess maybe something like that something like that now this one we have the player makes the basket or is fouled in other word or there so the player makes the basket that's P is fouled is a plain old Q 
There's no knot in there, so don't worry about this, uh, these little squigglies. But you have the word or, and I just mentioned over here, that, that symbol is or. So it's not that bad once you get the hang of it, once you understand what the symbols represent. Now we have this example. Brittany is a singer. I guess that's debatable. K-Fed, some of you probably don't know who K-Fed is, is a rapper. I guess that's debatable. JT is a dancer. I guess that's debatable too. But for for our example, we're going to say this is just what it is. It is what it is. So P, Q, R, you got three different verbals in this case. So the first example, it's an if-then statement. As soon as you recognize that, we know it involves an arrow. If-then is an arrow. That's an arrow. So we have Brittany is a singer. Well, that's the letter P. And then K-Fed is a rapper. Well, that's the letter Q. Well, that's a symbolic notation. If P, then Q. If Brittany is a singer, then K-Fed is a rapper. Now let's look at example B. JT is a dancer. Well, that's R. Brittany is a singer. Well, that's P. If and only if. Remember what that one is? That's the double sided arrow. So, there you go. R, double sided arrow, P. Now we have this one. If K Fed is not a rapper or JT is a dancer, then. So, first thing is if then. So, we have the arrow. Now you have K Fed is not a rapper. Now, I need to move back up here. K Fed is not a rapper. So, K Fed is a rapper, or is a rapper is Q, but not is a squiggly. JT is a dancer. That's R. And I have the word or. What is or? It's that. Then Brittany's not a singer. Brittany's not a singer. That's P. And then not is the squiggly. But there's a mistake. Let's go back up here. I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but we're going to find it and mention it. Did I mention it anywhere? Hope I didn't take that out. Yep. I'll put it in there for the notes. Anytime you have a compound statement with a comma, you always combine them with parentheses. With the parentheses. So if you got a compound statement on either side of the comma, you always use parentheses to represent them. I'll put them together. Got that? Now let's look at this example. And we're going to write these out in words. So here's how you do that. When we have the squiggly R, R is purple as a fruit, and the squiggly means not. So what that means is that purple is not a fruit. Because that's what the squiggly means. I'm still torn up by it, not having that statement. Now in this one, this is an if-then. Once you recognize what the symbols represent, you can go from there. So we got Q. This is saying if, and Q is first. So if Africa is a continent, then R is purple is a fruit. See that? And on this one, remember what that symbol is? It's an and. So for that one, start with the P. Kentucky is a state, and then and, and Q is 
Africa is a continent. Just using these simple statements. Now, on um, the last one we're going to do, that's an if and only if, that's a not, that's an or, and the parentheses means that this statement is in front of the comma. And so, here's how we write that. I'm going to write it over here. So here we go. P is Kentucky's estate. If and only if, see that? The double, arrow, double arrows, if and only if. And then R is purple's a fruit, but since it's got a swiggly, it's purple is not a fruit, comma. Did you catch that? So let's look at that again. We got a parentheses. Anytime we got parentheses, that statement goes in front, goes together, and then the comma comes after that. So it's either bef all before a comma or all after. And since that's all together first, it all comes first with a comma. And then we got the word or, and then Q, Africa is a continent. Let's look at that one a little bit more, just to make sure you get that. We get the parentheses, so that means this statement goes in front of the comma. And make sure that you spell everything correctly. So we got the parentheses, everything, all that comes before the comma. So it's a compound statement in front of the comma. P is just a regular P, so that one is Kentucky's estate. And then R is a not R, so purple is not a fruit. Purple is not a fruit. And then the double arrow is if and only if. And we have our comma there. And then we have the other conjunction, or the, yeah, which is, or the disjunction, because it's an or. It's a connective. Call it connective. So we have our connective, and that's an or. And then Q is Africa is the continent. There's no squiggly there, and so it just stays that. So look at that one. That's the last example. That's a good one, though.